Namaskar. This video is about how to be an ideal human being, how to live an ideal life. It is about balance between spiritual sphere of life and material sphere of life. Many years ago, I have found a sloka, a verse from Isho Upanishad. And it was saying that if you worship Avidya, if you follow Avidya, take shelter in Avidya, the force of ignorance or material force, you will go into darkness. But if you worship Vidya, spiritual force, the force of knowledge, you will go into even greater darkness. When I read it, I thought, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> what is this? It cannot be, cannot be, cannot be. My mind was not accepting it. So it has made a burn in my mind, in my brain. I stored in my brain. And I thought much about it. And for many years I've been practicing spiritual cult, meditation and all other things. And I've been also observing so many people who started to follow the spiritual path, who continued to follow the spiritual path, who started to leave the spiritual path, who started to continue the spiritual path, <laughs> who started to begin, and so on and so on. So many stages, so many people. And I have made my conclusions. And I think now I understand more this verse and I would like to share about it. It is very, very, very important. If you want to progress in spirituality, it is important to understand this message. So, there are two philosophies of life. One philosophy is called materialism, another is called idealism. In materialism, people believe that the matter is the primal cause of everything. Everything comes from matter. Consciousness comes from matter. And consciousness will go into the matter. From the ashes we rise, into the ashes we will go. <laughs> this is the philosophy. Consciousness depends on the brain. When the brain will die, the consciousness will die also. So, the material life is all that is important. Then another philosophy, philosophy of idealism, it says that consciousness is reality and the universe, the physical being, the, the, the physical objects, is nothing but an illusion. It is illusion. It's a mirage in the consciousness that will appear and will disappear one day. And one day we will all become liberated. We will become, we will merge with the ocean of consciousness and this illusion of this world will disappear. So these two philosophies, they can, they can be an innocent intellectual exercises. But when people start to accept those philosophies with the core of their hearts, they start to affect our lifestyle. And if we travel, all over the world, if we see the West and we see the East, we will see the reflection of those philosophies everywhere. If you go to the West, you will find the reflection of materialism. If you go, let's say, for example, to India, you will find the reflection of idealism. And both of these philosophies, they carry with them some defects. Defects are there. And if you study the uh, Western materialistic culture, you will find that, yes, that philosophy has brought us into darkness. Even everything is very nice, but people, they are not feeling happy. They are feeling depressed. The sense, the purpose of life is not, not everybody is getting that. Not everybody is feeling that, yes, my life has been fulfilled. Rather, there is a lot of suffering. But if you go to the East, 
we will find out that suffering is even more. <laughs> At least in the West, everything is clean, well organized, very nice. And in the East, you find that even that is not there. <laughs> and if that is not there, people are getting frustrated. And they feel that I have chosen a wrong trajectory of life. Now I should focus on the material aspect of life. I should work hard and create a better life for myself, for my children. So eventually you don't have material, you don't have spiritual also. So that is going into even deeper darkness. My spiritual master, he has said, we don't follow either of, the, of those extremes. We must follow the middle path. So he has announced for his disciples, he said, we follow the path of subjective approach through objective adjustment. What does it mean? Subject means I, subject. The one who is, who is seeing is subject. Something which is seen is an object. So objective world, it means the world which we see. And the subjective world is what is seen in that subjective world. So that is called subject. So subjective approach through objective adjustment. Where is the goal? We are, we are moving inwards. We are moving inside to find out what am I? To find out what is consciousness. We are trying to know our deeper inner essence. That is the goal of life. If you, if you worship something external, let's say your goal is to make a billion dollars. <laughs> After making this billion dollars, will you be happy? You think so, but no. <laughs> Maybe someone already made. Are you happy? Are you sure? <laughs> I don't think so. No. I have met people. I've met very rich people. Are they happy? No. They're not happy. They're not any more happier than a simple people who have, don't have even one. <laughs> They're not happy. Because if the goal is external, and especially if your consciousness is potential, you can make one billion dollars. It means you're very smart. <laughs> So, if you have that developed intelligence and then you are not a simple man and then you have a limited achievement, your thirst is infinite, your thirst is unlimited, your consciousness has unlimited potential, will you be happy with something limited? No, you will not be, you cannot be. So that is why goal cannot be external. So it should be internal. We should move in, inwards to find out who we are, to find out our divine potential. But then we have to move through external adjustment. We have to make our external life very orderly, very proper. And we have to be very strong in the physical world, in the material world. My Guru has said, there is no use to be a sheep in the society of tigers. You should be tigers. You should be stronger than the tigers. You should be lions. <laughs> I liked it very much. By following the spiritual path, I should not become weaker in either of the stratas of life. I should rather become stronger. So that is the philosophy. I will not try to explain how the world should be, the material world should be in this video. But I would like to explain four psychologies that brings, that leads us to the success in life. All human beings, they follow one of those psychologies. They ingrain the psychologies in themselves. Sometimes two together. But our master, he has uh, asked us to try and to develop all four psychologies. Even if you have one psychology properly developed, you will be very much adjusted to the world and you will prosper, you will succeed in life. But you will have, if you have four, you will be an extraordinary personality, inspiring for everyone. The personality who will 
affect the change in the world that will lead the world to the brighter future. So the one goal of spirituality is to create such people that can be the example for the future generations. So four psychologies are as follows. First one is the, they are called Varnas. Varnas means color because the mind has a predominant color. So the black color, color is called Shudra psychology or the psychology of laborer. Then red color is the Kshatriya psychology, the psychology of warrior. Then Vipra psychology, the psychology of intellectual or the sage. And then finally, the psychology of merchant, yellow psychology. So these four colors are there. And when we are born, we are all born in the Shudra psychology. Shudra means dependence. It is the tendency of, of dependence. You are dependent, first dependent on the parents, then dependent on the natural environment. Like you remember the, the very ancient people, they're dependent. If the rain will rain, then we will survive. <laughs> if you know, there will be a congenial conditions in the environment, we will survive. That is the dependency. Then uh, the values of this psychology is to have more free time, more personal freedom, uh, entertainment and the comforts of life. This psychology feels very comfortable uh, with working for the salary. They become good professionals and they are 90% of the productive force in the society. The goodness of this psychology is to learn how to work very hard, how to overcome laziness. That is the greatest defect of the laborer psychology. To be lazy and just to spend time in entertainments and the free time. The ideal of, you know, the, the ideal dream of this psychology is to go somewhere to Bali or to Thailand and to downshift. You stay there, do something through internet and make some videos about your great life and make some Instagram photos and, <laughs> and send to your friends and look how am I. And, and do some spirituality, do some meditation. You know, this is, <laughs> this is ideal of the Shudra life. This is how they, they think. Of course, neither of other mentalities will never think that what I will, be, what I will do there? Eat pineapples? Come on, after two days I will be bored with that. I want to do something greater for the, for the next generations, for the, for the society, for something. I want to, to really materialize some great ideal in my life. So the achievement of the first black, mental, uh, black mentality is to learn how to work hard, how to be responsible, because by nature it is a bit irris irresponsible. So learn how to be responsible, how to be disciplined and how to work hard. Naturally, if those qualities are learned, success is coming, success will be there. Then there is a Kshatriya psychology, warrior psychology. When you move from Shudra to Kshatriya, it's like uh, every next psychology is a, an antithesis for the previous one. Kshatriya, he does not want any personal freedom. The soldier, does soldier have any freedom? No. I will order the one who below me and I will obey the one who is above me. There is a structural discipline. He is disciplined, he enjoys the discipline. How to move, like on the, on the path of spirituality, how to move? First, you start to follow discipline. Religiously. <laughs> you may not understand why, if you are not already Vipra. <laughs> if you are already Vipra, then of course easily you will understand all the, all the rules and everything. But if you are not there, then just start to follow. And by following, 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 you start to get benefits and slowly understanding will start to come. But the Kshatriya does not need to understand. It's just, okay, 
the guru has said like this, I will do like this. <laughs> Sometimes it is, a bit, it is a bit annoying to be near the Kshatriyas because they annoy you with this, you know, some kind of fanaticism is there. But it is a necessary step to come out of that, uh, the first, the, the primal psychology, where you are just uh, with your own comforts, with your own a little world of your little nest, your little home. <laughs> if you aspire to become something greater, then you have to become Kshatriya, you have to become warrior. The warrior knows how to obey the rules and knows how to impose the rules also. He creates the structure in the society, he creates the discipline in the society. He takes responsibility for himself and also for the people who cannot take responsibility for themselves. So he takes responsibility for them, he cares for them, he protects them. So that is the next. <laughs> then there is a there was a point in my life I was happily following the Kshatriya path. <laughs> I was happily following the discipline and everything, having some beliefs. And then at one point I start to feel, wait a minute, this sounds illogical. I start to ask so many questions, I start to read so many books, I start to have questions about Guru, about the ideology, about philosophy, about everything. And I had, I, I, the doubts start to pile up in my mind. So many doubts, so many doubts, so many doubts. The Vipra will always doubt, the intellectual will always doubt. They piled up to such an extent, even I was close to the point of leaving the spiritual path. But it is an also a necessary, necessary crisis in life, because you must understand. And then when you ask so many questions, so many questions, again and again and again and again, and slowly, slowly these questions will be solved. And slowly you will see the bigger picture. You will see the entire philosophy, the entire ideology, not as an intra, uh, uh, contradictory things, but as a one beautiful system and you are completely convinced about it. So that is the path of Vipra, to ask why, the question why. The warrior does not why, does not have why, <laughs> it's just do. Then Vipra has why should I do, why should I do. But for those why, he will do everything. For his ideology, for his philosophy, he will live, <laughs> he will dedicate himself, his life for that, because he knows this is the, the truth. I am the worshiper of the truth. So this is Vipra. The weakness of the Vipra, the weakness of the Kshatriya is this fanaticism, this lack of understanding, lack of uh, wideness, the broader vision. That is the weakness of the Kshatriya. The weakness of the Vipra is his impracticality. He has all the theories, he has all the understandings, but he does not know what to do with those theories. So the Vaishya next mentality will ask, if you are so smart, why you are so poor? <laughs> and it is a very correct question. I don't mean to say only financial success. It, it, I mean, in whatever you do, why you're not successful if you're so smart? You must be successful in what you do. You must know how to implement practically on the physical, on the hard crust on the earth, how to implement your ideas. So next stage comes, the stage of Vaishya psychology. The Vaishya psychology is to take the achievements of the, of the previous stages implement them in such a way that you create the prosperity in the external world, that you are able to care for people around you, to provide them with the necessities of life. This is good Vaishna, Vaishya. But the bad Vaishya <laughs> is the greedy one, misutilizing his creativity, misutilizing his abilities, the power to exploit the people financially to 
create inequality in the in the world. The greatest weakness of Vaishya is his greed, greediness. I want everything for myself. I don't want to share. So his duty is to become charitable, to be able to, to produce the money, to produce the, the wealth in the planet and to be able to distribute it, to, to create the wealth for others, to, to create uh, valuable things for society. So that is the, that is the Vaishya. And then finally, there is another Shudra comes. <laughs> So once you are established materially, you know, you learned how to transform your ideas into the practical world, and you, you understood that there is some sorts of attachment to, I have become completely, I don't belong to myself. I have uh, so many involvement, I'm completely there. So next stage is again to go to Bali, <laughs> to, to become Shudra again, to become free from these things, to meditate, to become more spiritual, to uplift your mind higher. And after some time again come back on the Kshatriya and then Vipra and then Vaishya. You can go through this circle a few times, moving through the moods of this psychology. But what is the goal? What our Guru wants us is to imbibe and develop all the psychologies in one personality. So you are an ideal person. In every circumstances, you can do what is necessary. You can save this world. So this is the ideal. As a spiritualist, and what I see what is important, I've seen, I've observed the people moving on the path. So you do, if you don't take care of the external path of your life, then eventually you also leave the spiritual path. Some people, they think that, oh, uh, nothing is, I'm not successful at this, I'm not successful at that, I cannot find a job, I cannot uh, get married. Maybe I start to do spirituality, maybe I start to do meditation. Oh, I'm doing meditation, oh, this, all those people are mistaken, all those people are ignorant, they don't know the true reality of life. Fine, I'm fine, <laughs> I don't need to do anything in the external world. So this kind of approach exists. Of course, meditation will develop. Even this kind of people, they fi finally start to find an inspiration to develop in the spiritual world. But I find that this kind of people, they also don't do meditation properly. Those who do meditation properly, they have discipline. Then it reflects in the external world also. They are also su successful in the external world. So meditation should not become the escapism path from the reality. Oh, I don't want to solve my problem, so I will go into the spirituality. Not at all. The spirituality is the, is the higher path. Is the path is above the material path. So you have to become stronger. So from the very beginning, we should weed out, we should remove all the tendencies from the mind, these escapist tendencies. No. I will not run away from the problems. I will win the problems. I will come over the problems. I will dominate the environment. I will become Kshatriya. I will not become dependent. I will become free and I will develop in all the spheres. This is the true spiritual path. So subjective approach through objective adjustment will lead to the all-round success. And either of the extremes will lead either into the darkness or even into greater darkness. You will become frustrated, you will become disappointed. But the thing is, it is not the spiritual teaching, it is your weakness. Spiritual teaching, teaching is, is teaching you that in a balanced way need to develop and not ignore spirituality because spirituality Spirituality is the force of inspiration. When the inspiration is there, when the light is there in yourself, why don't you become everything? Why don't you become successful in everything you do? You will become. So thank you very much. I wish you 
subscribe into this channel and we go together through so many inspiration in future. Namaskar. <laughs>